Jesus. Amen. I did have a, I did have a, <laughs> I got a word, the Lord gave me a word <laughs> for night. Yeah. Praise God. I was, uh, I was, I can't, I couldn't sleep uh, yesterday morning. Well, I woke up earlier and uh, I came to the church and I was praying. You know, this is really kind of like the only time, the second time that this has kind of happened to me. The first time was a, a, a word, ended up being a word for Lily, but it started with more like a, a vision. This one was a word. I was praying for Naya and the Lord just started to speak to me. So I went and grabbed my notebook and wrote it down and put it in my iPad. So hallelujah. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. He don't, she don't, the Lord says you are my daughter. I have called you. I have saved you. I have smeared you with anointing. I pulled you out and separated you for a purpose. I have filled you with my glory for a purpose. The Lord says you have a purpose. You have a purpose to glorify me. Anointing to glorify me. Anointing to lead others to glorify me. My eyes roamed to and fro when I found you. Found you and called you. A little girl running aimless on a street. No compass. No direction. No mother. No father. I called you forth, says the Lord. I am a father unto you. I am your nourishing mother. I took you and put you in an open space. Then planted you in a fertile place, a place for you to grow, to be nurtured, a place for nourishment, a place of preparation for a purpose. Have I not carried you every step of the way, asked the Lord? Have I not been a father unto thee, asked the Lord? Do not listen to the outside voices. Listen to the voice of your father, my daughter, for I have anointed thee. I have smeared thee, and woe unto the one that touches my anointing. Thus says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We give you glory and honor. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that was awesome, man. The Lord just started speaking. I was like, I better start right, because I'm not really that used to this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But we're about to get used to it. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's read. Thank you, Lord. Children are dismissed. We need to release from the past, right? <laughs> yeah, they're ready. Get me out of this place. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, we're going to start with reading. Uh, Haley, could you put Psalm uh, 150 up there for me? We're just going to go ahead and read this whole psalm. Amen. Thank you. 150. Yes, ma'am, 150. Psalm 150. Uh, praise God. Let's just read this. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. Oh, we give you glory. I know you pray for Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mind. Thank you for your spirit. <laughs> we give you glory. You're so good. We love you. Have you. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament or in the heavens of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we had a little Bible study Sunday night. Uh, we had a good little turnout. And I was very pleased with the Bible study. So I will say that some of this is some information. And I'm going to give credit where credit is due. But one of the first scriptures started off because I felt like it was a community Bible study. When it was all said and done. And one of the first scriptures, actually when I was writing it, the Lord brought me back to a scripture that, brother, that sister Brenda gave whenever they were doing the teaching. And the scripture says, it's Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The name of my, my message tonight is called praise him. Simply just praise him. But in order to praise God... You have to believe that he is. You have to have faith to believe that God is even real if you're really going to praise him. Amen. Yeah. And I want to tell you that if you'll praise him, the word of God says he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Yeah. Yes. Now, you know, one of the things Bill, Brother Bill taught the uh, little teaching that we had, and he did a lot of dissection of various words. 
Okay, I want to just share with you a couple of the words, and then I want to give you some concepts of something that he found that he shared with us. Here's a couple of words about praise. Okay, so I guess really this should be called praise and worship, right? So the first word that I want to tell you about is called Yah. Praise or make a confession. Thanksgiving. The idea is to cast out or to shoot, almost like an arrow. To physically throw like a stone or an arrow out or away. To revere worship with extended hands. So it's kind of like when I read that, I think, shoot out. I throw my hands up in the air and I cast out praise from my mouth. Hallelujah. Hello is a different word. A celebration of thanksgiving for harvest. A merry praise, rejoicing, boast. It's got the word foolish in there. This one word, but you know what? The, the idea is to make renowned. To make something renowned. The word renowned means to make famous. Then there was a word I've never seen before. I almost feel like i got to write it. Because I don't even know if you've ever seen it. Maybe you have. I've just never seen this word. And I know a lot of English words. Stole to fire. You ever seen that word before? Isn't that a funny word? Stultify. One of the meanings of this word halal and praise is to stultify. You want to know what it means? I'm just anxious to know what that means. It means to cause someone to appear foolish or absurd. Wow. Foolish or absurd. Can you imagine that? Part of the concept of praise is to cause someone to look foolish or absurd. Now, let me ask you a question. I've shared this testimony before in the church. When the Holy Spirit first started grabbing a hold of my heart, I can remember that I used to have an old car. It was a little Buick Regal, and I had a, I had a bumper sticker when I first got saved, and it was metallic. I've told y'all some of y'all this story. Y'all might remember, and I'm trying, trying to wear you out with my old stories. But it was metallic, and it said, God is awesome. All right? And I thought that was cool, man. I'm going to put that on my car. After the Lord got a hold of me, I was in a teaching one time, and this guy was teaching on fishers of men. He had like a fishing hat on. He was throwing some lures out there. He had some bumper stickers, and it said, fishers of men. But I didn't think that it looked cool. I grabbed one. I was excited because I was just on fire for the Lord. And he gave me that bumper sticker. And then one day I was sitting in the living room, in the whole, and I felt like the Holy Spirit said, go put that bumper sticker on your car. <laughs> and so I walked out there with that bumper sticker, and all of a sudden I started thinking, man, this bumper sticker don't look cool like that old bumper sticker I used to have that said, God is awesome. And I started to literally have a struggle in my yard over this silly bumper sticker. I took the wrapper off. I was about to put it on there, and it was like it was repelling against me, and I couldn't put the bumper sticker on the car. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, If you'll put that bumper sticker on that car, I will teach you something about humility and pride. Amen. Wow. Amen. I said, All right, then I'm just going to put the bumper sticker on the car. And I did it. And you know what I did? I started laughing at myself. <laughs> Because you know how silly that was? Because the, immediately the Holy Spirit broke what was on me. And I realized how foolish it was. How silly it was. Because hallelujah, that's exactly what I need to be as a fisher of men. And hallelujah. And you know, the other day, I was the morning that the Lord gave me that word, I stopped at Stasium. And I had my AirPods in my ear. What a beautiful thing. I, you know, sometimes I listen to the Bible, but I was listening to worship music. And I went and I was filling up my gas and I was standing there and I don't even remember what song was playing, but they were singing about Jesus. And I was sitting there and I was like, and there was cars everywhere. And I was like, this would be a perfect place to just lift my hands in the air. I, because I had this message on my heart about glorifying the Lord. And I said, you know what? I don't think I'm about to lift my hands up in there. They're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm about to do it. I feel it's coming on. I'm about to do it. And then all of a sudden, that thing started messing with me again. And I remembered Bill talking about it in the thing because I asked him. I said, didn't you say one time, Bill, that, that there was a struggle in your life one time to lift your hands and to worship the Lord? He said, Matt, I'm telling you. He's because we talked about it before. He said it was almost like it was the craziest thing. I used to look around and it was absurd, but it was like I I wanted to lift my hands in the air. I wanted to worship the Lord, but I felt as though if I did that, then my, maybe even my wife, someone else was going to think that I look foolish. But he said, finally, when I did it, he said, I, it's not as though I heard. I don't. I felt like I heard in the spirit. Shackles, feathers coming undone, chains, yeah. bow, hit the ground. Hallelujah, freedom. They think you're not like you, lying devil. And I did. I'm not gonna lift my hands too high because my shirt's kind of short. But I lift my hands up and I started worshiping the Lord. 
And I, and I was just standing there singing to myself. I didn't make too big of a scene about it. But you know what? I don't even know if anybody even saw me. But you know, I started to think to myself, why would I not worship the Lord? Yes. Why would I not live for Jesus out loud and in public after all that He's done for me? And so I want to tell you, stultify. Hallelujah. Be, be ready to be stultified for the Lord because there can become great freedom and liberty in praise and worship. I want to share that with you. Amen? You know, when you start to dissect some of these words about praise and worship, you realize that, you know, that's one of the things Bill talked about was that praise is, off, is really connected to sound. Even in the Psalm 150, we talked about it, the ESV version says, Praise him with the trumpet, the lute, the harp, the tambourine, the dance, the strings, the pipe, the organs. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So a lot of times praise is connected to sound, okay? And so praise is connected to sound, whereas one of the things that he found out in his study was that worship was connected to positions sometimes, physical positions. Like when you break down the root words, sometimes it would lead you to the concept of bowing down, sometimes kneeling down. Lifting up your hands kind of low or sometimes lifting up your hands high in the air. Laying prostrate on the ground. And so the word, when I think of that, the words positional or postural come to my mind. You know, it would be a good word to use. And before we started the study, Naya happened to walk in here. And I was telling her, I said, you know what Bill was finding when he was dissecting these words? And I said about position. She said, I did a, wor a study one time on worship. And you know what I came out of there knowing is this, is that it was all about the position of the heart. What's the posture of our heart when we approach God? Amen. And then when we were in the study, I might not get it exactly right, but Lily made a comment that she did a study once and it had the big part she got out of it was that there was an invitation being brought, an invitation. And that when you begin to praise the Lord, this is I kind of like what I was seeing there and what she said, when you, what I've learned in my life is that when you begin to pray, he's given you an invitation. He's given all of us invitations. To be able to praise him, to be able to know him, right? And when you finally take him up on the invitation, something that I've learned is he starts to change the position yeah. of my heart. Yeah. With time, as I begin to sing to him and vocalize, amen? amen. One of the words that has to do with vocalizing praise to, to God is laud. Not loud, but laud. To laud him. To write about him. To extol him. To extol praise upon a person, Amen. Then Brennan brought up a good point. He brought us to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And in verses 1 and 2, it says this. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But then he said, well, wait, hold on a second. See, y'all won't be able to see it because we don't have it on the, on the screen. Out of another version, it says this. It's your spiritual Worship. Yeah, right. To allow your life to be a living sacrifice is really your spiritual worship. Holy Spirit, I'm going to need your help tonight yes. because I know that you have a, another layer to the revelation and understanding that you desire for your people yes. called by your name to know and to, and to receive. Lord God, so I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help me to communicate what you've shown me in this message. Amen. Yes. Another thing. That was brought out was this Genesis chapter 29 35 Leah um, um, yeah Leah conceived and she bore her first son, fourth son and she said this she said now I will praise the Lord therefore she called his name Judah mm. now that's so that's so beautiful if you know much about the word of God if you realize that from Judah was the tribe of Judah, yes. and from the tribe of Judah came David, and from David came Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and then Jacob, the father, when he's old, he lays hands on Judah to give him a prophetic word. And he says this, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before thee. Hallelujah. He, that's the kingly tribe. Well, also was noted that the first time that the word worship was used whenever God asked Abraham to worship. And what did he do? He had to bring Isaac yes. upon a mountain to offer him oh, yes. as a sacrifice. 
And then from there, as actually the word of God says, as a whole burnt offering. And then the first time whole burnt offering is used is in Genesis 8, whenever Noah gets out of the ark and he offers up the first whole burnt offering. The word of God says, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. You know, in these passages, we begin to realize something that worship isn't really about us. Amen? Amen. Let me say that one more time. Amen. Worship is not about us. Amen. The focal point of worship is all about God. Amen. And in order for true worship to take place, the opposite of self must occur. You know, I was able to hear Rich. Rich had a, a, a career in music for a long time. And I was listening to him share. Hopefully he doesn't mind me saying this. But I was listening to him share with the group the other day. And he said, you know, one thing I've learned about music in the church is it's completely different than music in the world. Mm -hmm. Music in the world, you're trying to put all the focus on you. The crowd wants, wants the focus to be on you. You're, you're entertaining them. Yeah. But, but music in the church is not that. Yeah. Music in the church is not that. It's all about him. And then he's already he got the revelation that it's all about also trying to help you, us, me, to connect to him. Amen. Amen. And that's what I want you to know that in order for true worship to take place, like the burnt offering, self must die yeah. so that God can be exalted. Amen. Amen. So I got to be honest with you. Self help, teaching, psychology, all those things that try to better the old man really doesn't have a place in the midst of the church. Everything that we're to do is to honor God. I believe that with all of my heart. Now, listen, when I say that, Boy, I got to be careful. I got to be careful. I'm not here to tell you that there's never a time or a place for, for things that take place in people's lives. I want to quantify what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, is that people are at different places in their world. People are at different levels in their faith. And an individual has to be the one that has the faith to believe God. Amen. And sometimes we can find ourselves in situations that we don't really know what to do. And you can't have faith for another human being. You can have faith for yourself. And so what I'm trying to tell you is this, is that don't let the devil beat you up. Amen. If you feel as though you have to try to seek help from another source. But I'm here to tell you, I will not shrink back from telling you this, that the answer is Jesus. Amen. 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 And the answer Amen. is for us to bow our knee to him and collect his Holy Spirit heal us. Amen. That's the answer. Everything else is a band-aid. Sometimes band-aids help and sometimes they don't because then you got to tear it off and that's a whole other story. <laughs> Psalm 22, 3 says this, but you are holy and you inhabit the praises of Israel. You know what that means? To dwell somewhere, to live somewhere. Hallelujah. You know, so it's not about how well it sounds as much as it's about how low it bows. Amen. So it's about the position of the heart, brokenness of heart, humble of heart, thankful, loving and kind towards God. The heart that sings and gives its praise. And on the other hand, everything that we do for God is supposed to be the best that we have to offer. A poor person in the Old Testament, if they were poor, then all they could offer for a sacrifice was a turtle dove. But if you had a turtle dove, if you had two, you better pick the best one. Because yeah, yeah. you're supposed to give the best. And if it's a ram, you're supposed to give the best ram in your flock. Wait, hold on. <laughs> that don't work. I'm going to mess up my gene pool. I got to have the strongest buck to breed so I'll produce the strong. No, you don't understand God. You don't understand the God that you serve yet if you think that. No, you offer to him the best that you have, hallelujah, and he responds by giving you his best. That's the way that God works. Yes, yes, yes. hallelujah. You know, when you study the word of God, we have to keep in mind what we learned before. This is kind of a little bit of a transition and a little bit of what I feel like God opened my eyes up even a little bit more to a recent concept that he's been speaking to me about some things. And so I just want you to kind of try as best you can to pay attention. I'll try not to keep you too long or use too many words, but I want you to try to grab a hold of this. When you study the word of God, you have to keep in mind what you learned before. Does that make sense? That's the reason I'm saying that is because God's word makes more sense when we keep it connected and we study it. That way, right? It is a living chronological word that he desires to reveal himself, his plan, and what's going on 
with us right now. Amen. Through his word. Therefore, we must pay close attention to what he is saying. All right. So God's purpose for man was that he was created to be the image of his glory. Does that make sense? He was created in the image and likeness of God. So that means that everywhere that Adam went, he carried God's glory with him because he was created in the image and likeness of God. It reminds me so that everywhere that he would have went, he would have carried the image of God with him. And it reminds me of that scripture that the Lord gave me, touched me a while back on numbers. I keep saying it to y'all, but it's because there's been something stirring in my spirit about it. And I don't know that I even have the complete understanding of it. But tonight is something a little bit more of an understanding of it. But as truly as I live, says the Lord, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. God's plan on earth is that his glory would fill the earth. When he created Adam and Eve, even before the fall, his plan was that Adam and Eve would leave Eden and that they would begin, that they would multiply and that they would take the glory of God that, that, that was found within Eden and that they would carry that glory across the whole earth because that is God's will. And everywhere that man would walk before the, before the fall, the glory of the Lord would be in that place. The earth was created to inhabit man. And God created man in his image and in his likeness. And God's will is that his glory be upon the earth. Amen? Amen. That man would be walking in a harmonic symphony of praise and glory and worship to the Lord. Everywhere that he went, everything that he did would be giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. As truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of God. Yes. And then the fall. An act of rebellion incited by evil entities, evil enemies that hate God and desire to what? Steal his glory. Steal his glory and receive honor and glory for themselves through some form of forced obedience towards sinful worship. The definition of glory in the Old Testament is honor, dignity, or reverence. God loves cleanliness. We talked about that with the bird bath on Sunday, right? Clean living, obedience, praise, worship, faith. So then it stands to reason that the forces of evil would want man to do the opposite. They would want man to believe and to do the opposite. Instead of believing God in his word and honoring his holiness with obedience, thankfulness through righteous living defined by God's word, evil would entice man to do the opposite. Make sense so far? Yeah. I hope so. Then instead of man being found in God's image and bringing God's glory into the earth, they would instead entice man to become corrupt, wicked, and obey their commands. And worship them through sin. You know, I preached there recently that, you know, sinful activity, especially things that are connected directly to addiction. I started, I, I preached it and it won't come out as good as what it did when I preached it because it was flowing. And I'm trying to remember back exactly what I said. But the Lord revealed to me that every time, you see, some, look, physiologically, some drugs have a shorter half-life. Medical terms, what does that mean? Certain drugs might have a half-life of four hours. Right. So when you start coming down off of it, if you're physically addicted to it, very quickly your body starts going through withdrawals. And physically, it's, it's like knocking on your door. Okay, but spiritually, you got to understand something. You don't have to be physically addicted to something. You, you, there is a spirit of addiction. Yeah. There's a demonic spirit yeah. connected yeah. to addiction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what it does is you might, you might try to leave it around for a while, but if you're not free from it, you're forgetting about me over here, buddy. You're forgetting about me. It's time for you to come worship me. Yeah. It's yeah. time for you to come worship me and to do what it is that I've called you to do. You know that you belong to me. Come on. And and I know that that sounds harsh, but it's reality. Yeah. And and I can preach about it because I've been there, yeah. right? And if you've been there, you just want to tell the truth because you don't want people to have to obey the knock right. of a demonic spirit. You know, whenever you think about this, and so what, 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 what would happen is, is that if this is happening, now man bears the image of evil 
And it, the image of evil is now being spread across the earth. Okay? And, and so if we view this thought from one of one, this point that I made last week, I asked her not to clean the board. Sanctified. To be made holy. To be set apart. It has a whole new meaning. To be made holy and to be set apart from the world. Because see, the world that is not in Christ is under the bondage of evil. Yes. And they're under the bondage of sin. Right. And their hearts are being knocked upon and told that it's time to worship. Yeah. And as they worship that way and live their lives that way, instead of the image of God being spread across the earth, it is instead the, the, the image of evil. Yes. Amen. So looking from this angle, I got to tell you, evil trying to cause man to bear their image makes all these various rebellions even more profound. I, there's no way that I could have the time to really try to elucidate what I'm trying to say to you. But it makes the rebellion of Babel take on a whole new layer. It makes the rebellion during the times of the judges, each individual rebellion, especially leaders that cause people to rebel, the repeated rebellion of the judges, rebellion that results in bondage, the rebellion of Solomon that split the kingdom and ushers in idolatry and sin and wickedness, finding its climax in Ahab and that wicked woman Jezebel who seduces God's people and steals our hearts away from him. And it just makes the whole thing like it's a whole nother layer. And maybe not for you right now, but for me. Or maybe maybe you don't think it's that big of a deal. But I'm just like, wow. The image of God. Yes. I was, Matt Abel was created to bear the image of God. Yes. And God's looking for somebody since the fall that will take that image and bring it into the land. Yes. He's looking for somebody that will praise it. He's looking for somebody that will glorify his name. Not part-time, he wants full-time employees. Yes. And that's the difference of what's taking place in the church, y'all. Yes. The truth of the word says that we were created to live for God and to worship Him. Yes. And I'm tired of complaining about other churches. I want to help them. I don't know that they want my help, but I want to help them. So you know what? I don't pray for them. I'm going to pray for them. Oh, by the way, there's a one of court service at Cornerstone this Sunday Amen. night. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Well, while we're on that and we broke the flow, there's also some announcements. I'm going to answer some of the other announcements. But look, Pastor Butch, it, uh, River, what's it called, River? It's River Ministry. River Ministry, August 20th through the 27th, 6.30 p.m. You're going to have some fire over there, bro. I believe it. Solomon's actually going to be there one night, but did not tell him when Solomon's going to be there. Oh, by the way, it's in uh, Platinum, oh. right? Addis? Brood. No, Addis. <laughs> Addis. It's going to be good. And Solomon will be here also. I was supposed to announce that first weekend of Labor Day. Got some, don't forget on the way out, I got some flyers for the okay. Solomon thing. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Enough announcements for now. <laughs> Praise God. Where were you? Thank you, Jesus. So it takes on a whole other level. And the, and the enemy's attempt is to, or intent is to steal their, God's people's hearts away from him. Amen? Amen. So, so now when I think about when I think about some other scriptures, hit me. Okay, so I'm just kind of shotgunning you a little bit here. But Acts versus Revelation. All right, you ready? Acts 2.11, I'm just going to read it real quick. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't mean to get too deep on this. I was going to move through it pretty quick. But at Babel, they were all of one language and rebelling against God. God confused their languages and spread them across the earth because God's glory will fill this earth and even though rebellious man is trying to fight against him he says no you're going to fill the earth up because i got a plan and on the next page i'm going to turn the page and i'm going to call a man named abraham and out of that man i'm going to create a nation and through that nation i'm going to give the world to christ the son of the living god and he's going to die on the cross hallelujah and when he ascends the holy ghost is going to descend and when he descends oh thank you jesus they got christians all over the world People all over the world bearing the image and the glory of God. Amen. And now he's just looking for some folk to wake up. Yes. Wake up, quit living for yourself. Wake up and start living for the king. Wake up and start believing his word. Wake up and start trusting him. And bear his image. Bear his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about it. And hear the knock of the Lord, not 
the knock of the world. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, sister. That's a good word. Hallelujah. Yes, knock of the Lord. That's what that girl told me at the, my hairdresser. She said, I just keep hearing it. So I keep trying to answer the door. Hallelujah. I said, you keep doing that, girl, because you're doing, you're doing so good. Hallelujah. I can't help you no more than the Lord's doing for you. So that's the book of Acts. But but I did want to, they were all speaking different languages. But look, look, but see, that's what the Lord wants to do. That's really what the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is all about. What? That the glory of the Lord would fill the earth. That's right. Yeah. So that, yes, you need your prayer language. Brother Kirk and I were talking about that today. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, we ought to be praying in the Spirit 24-7 if we can. Every time the enemy comes against us, praying in the Spirit, building up your most holy faith. Hallelujah. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, come up and get prayer. Let's pray for you. Let you get filled up and over. Yes. But what's amazing is, is that they all heard the wondrous works of God in their own tongue. Yes. What that tells me about the baptism of the Holy Spirit is exactly what Jesus said. Tarry in Jerusalem, wait for the gift of my Father, the promise from my Father, and you will be endued on, uh, for power on high, and you will become witnesses for me. Yes. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the outermost parts of the earth. That's what the tongues is all about. It's about wit being a witness. Yes. It's about having the power that you need to be a witness. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because I mean, you can be, you can, we can be tongue talkers and never even told nobody about it. That's a problem, church. Come on, help me out. That's right. I'm not here to tell you a lie. <laughs> help us, Lord. Yes. But. That Acts passage versus Revelation 13, 15. Ooh. He had power yes. to make the image of the beast speak and cause those that all those that will not work all those that will not worship the image of the beast, the image of the beast, to be killed. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding know the number of the beast is a number of a man. Mm -hmm. They worship the image of the beast 666 because man was made, was created on the sixth day. 666, the ultimate fulfillment of mankind. The lie in the garden. Listen, this is the end. In the beginning, the, sa the, the Satan said, what did he say? In the day that you eat thereof, surely you will not, but instead you will know and you will become as God. Man becoming God. The new age message right. is exactly why because see before the fall of man there was a fall of a rebellion right. and the rebellious fall said I will exalt myself above the throne of God I will lift myself up above the congregation of God I will be made into like the most high the very same the very same lie that entered into Lucifer that caused him to become the fallen one is the very same lie that he injected into mankind. And mankind now has this desire that no, I only live, YOLO, I only live once and I'm going to live for myself. And unfortunately, that's just a collateral damage. But they got people that actually believe that they can become as gods. You know, what's interesting is me and brother, me and brother Kirk were tag teaming up in the prison. And I kind of rolled up on him. He was already up in there. And he was talking to some guys. And you know, look, I don't mean to be that guy. I've been thinking about that guy lately, though. He sure was looking real confident laid up in that bed like that. Okay? Lord help him. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, he's like, well, I'm just studying everything because I'm just looking for the truth. But they were definitely leading toward Islam. Well, the other, his buddy said, well, look, this is what I want you to see. And so it says, it's because they believe Jesus is a prophet. It said, yeah. and Jesus told them. To go forth into all the world and to teach that man is omnipotent. Wow. I was like, dude, you see that right there? I said, that means all powerful. And that ain't what the Bible said. And Jesus ain't never said that. Right Jesus died for man. And this right here is what New Age says. I said, this is the Illuminati, dude. He said, well, that's what I believe. I said, well, that's what you can believe if that's what you want to believe. But you're not seeking truth. Then he got, then he didn't get mad. But he came back and he found me later when we were baptizing people. And he wouldn't come up close to the baptismal tank. But they called me over there. He's like, And he had a dictionary. And he said, what you said ain't true. Poor guy. I mean, he didn't. He didn't. He just didn't know. He, because the, the definition of omnipotent in his dictionary said almighty instead of all powerful. 
And I said, I understand, buddy, but that means it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Almighty and all powerful mm -hmm. is the same thing. So what I did tell you is true, but I understand you just wanted some clarification. But the point is this. What was my point? My point was that this is the deification of man. That in the end, man is looking for something other than God. And that the enemy is wanting man to look for something other than God. And that this is the fulfillment of the enemy's plan. That he wants to inject his image inside man. And ultimately, he wants to force man to worship his image. See, this earth belongs to God. God said that his glory would fill the earth. Satan wants to steal God's glory, receive God's worship, and attempt to take over this earth. He wants to turn God's people into slaves so that they cannot worship and serve God. Now it makes sense when I remember God's words in Exodus. Exodus chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, or El. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them, and I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel. I just want to say something right now to you, child of God. Maybe you've been groaning in your spirit. Maybe you haven't released it. You need to let the Holy Spirit groan through you if that's what you need to do. Don't be silent. If you got something twisted up on the inside of you and the enemy's trying to hold you down with a spirit of heaviness, don't you be silent. You go find a place in your house where nobody else is and you get to groaning, girl. But sir, you get to groaning. And you let the Holy Spirit speak through you. And you begin to praise Him. And you begin to cry out to Him. The devil don't want you to groan. The devil doesn't want you to release your praise to God. But I'm telling you right now, if you will, God will bring, bring a victory. Amen. God will bring hope. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, I will bring you out from under the burdens of Egypt. I will rid you out of their bondage. I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Verse 7, and I will take you to me for a people. <laughs> Isn't that good? You can be God's people. Hallelujah. Amen. Dude, that's a big deal. Hallelujah. <laughs> to belong to God. People think we're crazy, y'all. Right. <laughs> oh, Lord, help them. Help them. I will be to you, God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you for a heritage. I am the Lord. I haven't gone back and looked because I talked about the waters, the bitter waters of Mara recently. This is chapter 15, so after the Exodus. But I don't know. It's probably before the waters of Mar, I guess. They sang a song. <clears throat> Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. Hallelujah. But you, you know what's interesting is this. So that's before they got, probably before they got to the waters of Mar. And they're, and they're praising the Lord. And they're excited because God just did a miracle. He opened up the Red Sea. He, he gave them strength to walk out. Their enemies were just drowned right behind them. Wouldn't you be excited? <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord gave you victory like that. You'd be, you'd be singing. Amen. Sometimes in your life, I want to tell you something. The Lord does a work in you. He'll fill you up with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He'll, he'll, he'll save your soul. He'll give you freedom in an area of your life that you hadn't had freedom in in a long time. And you'll be on fire. And you'll be on cloud. You'll be on the top of the mountain. Yes. And then the next thing you know, all of a sudden, here comes a trial. Come on. Right? They, they sing it right now, but wait till they get to the bitter waters tomorrow. Oh, Lord, they're murmuring now. <laughs> and the reality of it is this, is that if you think, just like David, David received the anointing and the promise that he would be king. And I was sharing with somebody earlier today. Next thing you know, he's running to En Gedi and he's hiding in the cave of Adullam. That's right. 
And so what you're going to do, David, I'm going to tell you what he's going to do. I might not do it all right. Sometimes it might even look like I'm foaming at the mouth. But hallelujah, I'm going to hold on to the promise of God. And I'm going to take my anointing and I'm going to receive my appointing. And I'm not going to quit. And any time that gets in the way, he got to go down to it. That's the, that, amen, that's the mindset we got to have. Even the way the Lord's been moving in this church for about the last, I don't know, however many months. More starts moving. Hallelujah, everybody. I don't know about you. I'm excited. I'm still excited. Yes, but then all of a sudden, there's an attack. Don't tell me there's not an attack because I can feel it. Yes. But yeah, what you going to do? Yes. What you going to do? You're going to be like a yellow dog. Put your tail between. I'm not making fun of nobody, but I'm just saying, what are the choices? The choices are the fight. Yes. How you fight? You fight on your knees. Yes. You get on win this war by putting up your boots to the devil. No. You get on your knees and you cry out to God. And you say, look, Lord, I see what I know what you said. And I'm going to hold on. Amen. And listen, we learn to pray. Yes, yes. We learn to thank God for the people that are coming to church to pray. Thank you for the people that you guys. But listen, we gotta learn. And I'm not saying that we're not. I'm just saying we gotta learn to pray in our house. Yeah, yeah. We gotta learn to pray on the way to work. Yeah, yeah. We gotta learn to pray when we act. Yeah. We gotta learn to pray, 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 pray. Because the enemy, do you believe what I'm trying to tell you that the enemy yes. wants to take you out the ball game? Yes. I'm trying to, do you believe me when I tell you the enemy wants to take your children out the ball game? Yes. I'm telling you right now, I know firsthand the enemy yes. wants to destroy our children. Yes. He wants to destroy our family. He wants to destroy this church. He wants to destroy your job. He wants to destroy your company. But hallelujah to the Lamb of God, he don't get the last say so. Yes. Jesus stood the bell. He won't be across the world. Praise God. Open up the heavens, Lord, and rain down your blessings. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm actually closing with this psalm. Singers, musicians, y'all can come, but I'm going to read to you Psalm 149 because, listen, this is about victory. This is victory in praise. So the next time you're feeling down, the next time you feel that spirit of heaviness, listen to me, experience teaching you right now. This is not something that I learned in my master's degree. This is living it for real. Spirit of heaviness will try to jump on you again. But I promise you, if you defy that lion devil, <laughs> if you defy that lion devil, I dare you. Especially if you don't probably, I dare you. You ain't going to do it. Raise your hands in the air. Hallelujah. And stultify. <laughs> Make yourself look foolish in the eyes of the world. Because, well, hey, listen, you know what? You may not be ready to stultify to that level, I guess. But guess what? At least in your spirit. Amen. Begin yeah. to speak praise to the Lord. Amen. Begin to glorify the Lord. Let me read Psalm 149 to you. Amen. I praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the temple and heart. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. This is the part that I wanted you to sing. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand yeah. to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise you, the Lord. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say I believe with all of my heart that when the enemy comes against us, if we dare begin to praise the Lord. Yes. Begin to praise Him. Begin to glorify Him. In spite of what we see, mm. I feel like the Lord is about to wrap up those principalities oh, yeah. and powers with yes. chains. He's about to go to oh, battle for us. He's going to tear up those principalities, those demon spirits with feathers of iron. They try to put us in feathers of iron. No, ma'am. No, sir. The Lord's going to put them in feathers of iron. He's going to tie them up. He's 